Okay, in this video I'm going to teach you how to annotate a sound file. Uh, that means making a text grid and labeling the sounds or the words. So let me open this file first, uh, the uh, front vowel file that we recorded last time. And uh, here's what it looks like and here's what it sounds like. Okay. And if I now want to annotate it, I go to annotate in this menu right here and to text grid. And uh, what pops up is this sound to text grid window. You can then name the tiers. There are different tiers in the text grid and you can name them what you want. I will name mine vowels because I'm going to label the vowels. And um, which of these are point tiers? Well, the vowels tier is not a point tier. It's going to be uh, uh, interval tier. So uh, rather than single points, I'm going to be labeling intervals, whole vowels, not the center point of vowels, for example. So I'm going to leave this blank, and I'm going to click OK. Now what is created is a text grid over here in the Pratt Objects list. And now if I select both of these together, uh, sound and text grid, and I view and edit. What I can see here on the screen is I've got my sound file like I had before uh, up here, the waveform, the spectrogram, but I also have this thing down here um, which is one tier of a text grid and the title of the text grid tier is vowels. Right now there's only one single uh, interval, that's this whole thing, so it says I've selected one of one interval. Okay. Now, if I want to uh, label this, okay, remember this is the word uh, beat. And if I zoom in on this, zoom in a little bit more. And now I want to label the vowel sound. So let's say it goes from approximately here. Um, now I want to put in a boundary. I can add on select, selected tier, or I can just hit return. That's the short shortcut for adding a boundary. So I'll hit return. That adds this red double bar boundary here. So that's the beginning of my vowel. And then uh, the end of my vowel. Well, this is a good question. Uh, where does the vowel end? Seems to sort of trail off here. and seems to stop here. So let me let me label it all the way to here and then let me label this as beat with a capital V for vowel, beats vowel. Okay, um, now if I go back and look at all of them again, now notice that I've selected the second of three intervals. This is the first interval, this is the second, this is the third interval. I have two boundaries in my text grid, one at the beginning of beats vowel, one at the end of beats vowel. And now if I continue to label, let me label all of them. So here's bit, zoom in a bit, and put this on here, and hmm, again, this is difficult to know where the end of the vowel is. There still seems to be some activity here, um, and you can still see some formants in the text grid down here. Here it's quite flat. So let me, let me label the end of the vowel something like here. Don't worry too much about exactly where it is. Um, Let's label this bit, okay, and go back out again, and let's look at this one. So this is bait, and the beginning of the vowel is approximately here. If I want to get precisely where the beginning is, I can zoom in like this and get precisely where I think the beginning of the vowel is like that, and then zoom out again. I'll zoom to selection. So here's the beginning of the vowel. Where's the end of the vowel? Well, again, uh, probably somewhere around here. And so this is Bates vowel. And I'll go to the last one here. And I'll label this one. 
let's say somewhere around here just let's not argue about where the end of the vowel is so that's uh, bet's vowel so now i've got uh, now notice i've got nine intervals um, so four intervals for the vowels and then five intervals with no label in them these five intervals and uh, it shows me which interval i've selected so here's beat here's bit bait these are just the vowels of each one okay <clears throat> now uh, i've got this text grid if i want to save this text grid on my desktop over here i can save it as a text file okay save as text file and on the desktop and uh, by default it labels it as wilson front because the same it's using the same sound file same name as the sound file and then uh, the extension is dot text grid for a Pratt text grid so let me save it there so here we go we've got a text grid file we've got a front our wave file here so those are saved and even if i um, even if I close Pratt, uh, these files are still going to be here. Okay, okay. so now uh, what can I do with these? Well, uh, one thing I can do is I can uh, make a new Pratt script and do some measurements with this. So um, let me see. A text grid file is just uh, a bunch of numbers. Uh, again, if we open this text grid file with uh, something else, let's say... Uh, text edit okay what you can see is this is what a text grid file looks like so I've got uh, a bunch of headers here and uh, x x min x max down here these are the times the minimum time is zero the maximum time is 3.52 and then I've got uh, different intervals in my text grid so the first interval starts at time equals zero finishes at time equals 0 0.244 seconds and there is no label okay and the next interval second interval has a label it's beat v okay beat vowel and the beginning time is this the end time is this okay and so on we just go through all the intervals so that's what a text grid actually looks like um, when you look at it with the text editor okay so we can uh, ask Pratt various questions about the text grid when certain vowels start or what the measurement of something is uh, for a certain uh, label and so on. So that's what we're going to do next. Um, we can we can click on text grid and query <clears throat> and then we can get the start time, get end time, get the total duration of the whole file or we can query the interval tier, get number of intervals. So the number of intervals on tier one, what, what is that? Well, there are nine intervals, okay? We can query uh, many things here, okay? The time of interval four, start time, the end time of interval seven or whatever, the label of interval six. Uh, let's try the label of interval on tier number one interval number six the label is bait v okay so these are things that uh, you can get uh, using these commands and of course any command that you can that you can click on here or choose from the menu we can put in a script and remember the way to do that first we can clear our history and then uh, we can go over here and we can choose query and let's say what we just did, get in label of interval on tier one, interval number six, click OK, you see bait V. And now if I paste history, paste history here, you can see that this is the command in a script for getting the label of interval on tier one, interval number six. Okay, so right now uh, there's no selection made, so if if I have the sound file selected and I try to run this script, well, the problem is 
you cannot get the label of an interval in a sound file because there are no intervals in the sound file. The intervals are a property of the text grid. So I get this error that it's not available for the current selection because I've selected the sound file. So one way I can fix that is if I go uh, over here to my uh, new Pratt script and I clear the history, then I come over here to Pratt objects and I select the text grid, okay, that's all, just select the text grid, and then come over here and paste the history. So this is what selecting the text grid looks like as a command. Okay, so now I have two commands in my uh, Pratt script here. And now, if I have the sound file selected, but I run my Pratt script, now it succeeds, it doesn't crash, because the first command here is selecting the text grid object. So. So that's um, you know a very simple way of of uh, creating a script using this clear history and then doing some clicking or choosing some items and then pasting the history in here.